Hi everyone, I'm here with my partner Chris Blankenship and we're in part three of our series on the Mark Lemon painting of the Battle of the Alamo. You know, there's no end to the details when you talk about the Alamo. And when you get involved in very large projects like this one is, uh, it's possible for an artist like Mark Lemon to become consumed, if not immersed um, in the action. And in this painting, Mark places himself in several key areas of the painting so they can feel more in tune with this historical event. Yeah, that's really, that's interesting. Let's hear Mark's perspective on just how he became part of this project. This is kind of a possible interpretation of a small gun from an elevated position that mm -hmm. did a lot, of, a lot of damage. This one, it just fired actually. Yeah, I can see the smoke. And then these guys are all, yeah, and that's where the gun was fired. Uh, one of the things that, that strikes you when you're standing there in the real place and you, know, you get a sense of how big it is, mm -hmm. is that these guys didn't come over in, in integral units. They didn't just materialize here as yeah. a squad or as a company. They were coming over, fighting, dying, and they would come over ones, twos, threes, which actually, and they're not, one guy is not gonna charge. You know how a soldado's mentality is. He's not gonna charge by himself into a bunch of Texians. He's gonna wait until he gets two or three guys or four or five guys with him. So they're reforming here, they're forming here, and that gives these guys time to fire, and kind of fall back, fire and fall back, which is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Sort of like a retreating action, and eventually they're headed for the long barracks. I mean, I, I try to put a lot of thought in everything, not just put, put men there. The reason that I put these casualties down here is because that is indicative of um, Costa's attack, where he came in at the western, western part of the north wall, but because of the fire, apparently executed a right oblique and then swung, like a wheel maneuver and swung around against the north part of the west wall. And that's just, this is the trail of men that left, he left behind. And it sort of gives you that motion. It just brings back, I, I, I fought and fought with this thing for like over a year. And so it's just a lot, a lot of late nights and early mornings. And so they're using the uh, Asakia for a trench, you know, mm -hmm. you can see that. I mean, I try, to, I try to incorporate everything that the first person participants, the witnesses and participants describe. I really like that you can see Mark in different parts of the painting that he put himself in there. It's uh, sort of like what you could call in film production an Easter egg, which is, uh, you know, if you, if you hunt enough for the details, you'll find a special surprise. Yeah, and there are so many surprises when one encounters a, a massive painting like this on the Battle of the Alamo. You know, did you know there was more than one Alamo flag? Well, you're going to hear about it in this next episode.